really doing a whole lot. I was going to set up a live and everything like that. So I'll wait for a few people to get into the chat and we'll go over a few things. I wish I had my backgrounds like I do for TikTok, but I don't. So we're just going to have to make do with what we have. I hope everybody is doing wonderful this Wednesday morning. It's nice to see everybody. I did not, um, I did not go live with this and this is not running on multiple platforms. It's only running on here. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, the first case that we have is related to um, the two women that disappeared from Kansas and it's Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. And they, they took off, um, there's a lot of stuff that's behind the scenes when it comes to this particular case. So apparently the Veronica in her significant other, babies, daddy, mommy, whatever, you know, uh, his name's Wrangler Cole um, Rickman. And I don't know if they're going through a separation, if they're going through a split, what, are, what the situation is around, um, why they're split up but apparently Wrangler is in rehab so he's definitely in rehab I've got confirmation um, from a person that uh, spoke to the grandmother of Wrangler and he's they said that Wrangler has been literally in jail since I think March 20th or something like that and he can't have contact with anybody for at least 30 days can't leave the facility can't do any of this stuff so, you know, obviously he was not there. I guess it's the, the long and the short of this. He was not there. And um, if he was not there, who in the world could be responsible for them missing? This is what it says. It says, missing Kansas women, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. I spoke with the grandmother of Wrangler Cole Rickman. Rickman is Veronica's ex and the father of her children. Grandmother confirmed the following. Um, Rickman was checked into rehab on the 22nd. Uh, 30 days, no contact, cannot leave on any outings from the facility for the first 30 days, has been there for, and has to be there for six months. Um, it said that the uh, children, that people were asking if the children were safe. I don't like the response of um, Oklahoma State you know, Bureau of Investigation. They said they have an eye on them and they're okay. I don't know what that means. What does an eye mean? They have an eye on them. I don't like that. I uh, like their mother is missing, their father's in rehab. Who the hell has them? Uh, she shared a few more interesting um, pieces of information that uh, this person needs to vet and stated that no family will likely be doing any type of interviews that could hinder the investigation. And again, this is coming from Hickman's side of the family. Um, <clears throat> I had an opportunity. We have a Facebook page. Hold on here, let me go over here. Let's see if we got. We have a Facebook page. It's, it's finding uh, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. J I L. There's only one L in Jillian's name. J I L I A N Kelly K E L L E Y. And I hope you guys go over there and uh, sign up for that because there's a lot of information coming in. And and this was a situation where we have another. Um, discussion group that's out there and they're posting some information but they only posted part of the information so they only posted like one page of one document of a multiple page document and so when you read it it really looked horrible oh good morning Sam it's nice to see you when you read it it looked really horrible for Veronica and while this is a custody dispute and, and, and opposing counsel is going to say and point the finger at the other party and say they admitted to this and they admitted to that doesn't mean they did and doesn't mean that it's in the record and doesn't mean the courts agree with them so the family member of Veronica was like you know this is so disheartening they don't know what they're talking about and um, you know this is just really rough on the family as you guys can imagine you know they this was a supervised visitation they brought a, a uh, Veronica brought um, uh, a church a, a preacher's wife, pastor's wife with her for the visitation, which in many cases, the pastor's wife does go to these visitations. When my parents were going through the divorce, I went to the, we had our counseling and our visitations and whatever at a church. So it's common. And we also had a, a preacher or a pastor uh, pipe in on the, um, <clears throat> the Facebook group as well, like explaining that this is 
kind of what they do. Good morning, Smiley. You're up awfully early, or you probably haven't gone to bed. Lisa, good morning. It's nice to see you. We're just talking about the two women. I'm going to move over to the Sebastian Rogers case in here in just a second, but <clears throat> when it comes to Veronica and Jillian, I just want to advocate for them, and for those that don't know who they look like or what they look like, that's them right there. That's Veronica and Jillian. They're both missing under suspicious circumstances. And one of the things that I've been noticing in the back uh, chat rooms is that Veronica was pretty fearful of her in-laws up early. Can't I, I woke up at two o'clock, smiley. I woke up at two o'clock wide awake. I didn't even go to bed until 11. So I'm literally going on three hours, but I'm wide awake, just like you said. And it's like, okay, well, what do I do? If I stay up too long, I'm probably going to end up falling, taking a nap and then I won't do a live. And then He's going to be pissed off at Bullhorn Betty. I don't know what's going on with my sleep. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the change of times. I wish they would stop the whole, um, you know, daylight savings crap. Like, I never understood it. For people that want that need daylight, just have winter hours and summer hours. Why punish the rest of the people in the country because you need summer and winter hours? Just change the hours. Who cares if it says 9 o'clock instead of 8 o'clock? Let people sleep, damn it. <laughs> Let people sleep. So what do you guys think? I mean, if, if like, <clears throat> just spitballing this, this, this case, you know, that the, they were, their car was found abandoned three miles away from their destination. But the people at their destination are stating that they never made it. Who in the desolate part of Eva is going to force them off the road three miles from their destination? None of this makes sense. It just doesn't make sense. It's too close to their destination house for me because we know typical radius, especially in rural areas, is 20 miles. They're within three miles. They're not even in a five-mile radius. They're below a five-mile radius. Like This is like screaming just bad juju. And it keeps making me wonder who Wrangler's mom is and who is she living with. This is not something a woman did. I, I can tell you that. Uh, it, it doesn't, like, I'm not feeling, or this is not ringing that a woman had a hand in this. This is not a woman's doing, in my, unless this woman is, is a big, big woman. Uh, but this is not, I mean, you're talking about two women having to control two women. Mm, I'm sorry, that sounds, that sounds male to me. That sounds like, um... It, it sounds like somebody that you would that you would be scared of. I, I don't know, unless unless his mom is a gun-toting woman. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. She's fearful of the in-laws, and it's not. And, and I heard that it's not just the, the Wrangler's mother, but I heard it's her boyfriend or her husband or something with the male on Wrangler's mom's side, whoever she's seeing. Well, hello, Pro Charlotte. It's nice to see you. Pro Charlotte Luke, it's nice to see you. Green Eye PI, it's nice to meet you. Met them driving up. Met them driving up. I met them driving up. I forget what. Oh, met the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody met them driving up. Yeah, that that's possible. That's possible. Could somebody said, hey, we we got the kids in the car. Can you just pull over? We'll be right there. And I also heard. Now this is rumor. A lot of this stuff is rumor. I can't take it as fact, but. Um, uh, is that their windows were busted out. I heard that the windows in the car was busted out and that there was some blood inside the car. Now, you know how it's, it's hard because you don't know when you're being trolled, when you're not being trolled, but I'm not looking from people. People aren't telling me this. I'm, I'm searching and sleuthing and I'm reading some little snippets here and snippets there. And it makes me wonder, you know, if, it, you know, because law enforcement is keeping this tight lip. Like they're not trying to coordinate search parties it almost seems like they have an idea of what happened. And I, I don't know if that's the case, but it just, to me, it kind of it, it feels that way. Danielle, <laughs> we got all the insomniacs up tonight or this morning. And they're like, I can't sleep. I can't sleep either. I've been up since two. I've been up since two. I probably got the bags. To well, I, no, I guess the bags aren't too bad. The bags aren't too bad. But um, yeah. I met them driving up, stopped them, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, you know, that would make sense where they were, but it would still be somebody that they know. You know what I'm saying? It would. It, it's, not, it's not an unfamiliar person. 
So it comes back to who is in that area and who would have a motive. There's nobody really with a motive. The only motive that I see is the kids. That, so I don't know. Where did this case happen? Well, Heidi, it's, it's kind of weird because <clears throat> the girls are from uh, Hugoton, um, Kansas, which is <clears throat> just a little north of the panhandle of Oklahoma. And they were going to Eva. And Eva is like this tiny little speck on the map. Um, if you try to get Huff, uh, Hugoton and uh, Eva in it, Eva, the name Eva comes off the map. You have to kind of circle it and get, give people the idea where it's at. But it's in between um, Kansas and Oklahoma. And uh, the, the, the weird thing is, is even though the car was only three miles from the destination, they were actually in South Elker, Kansas. But the Oklahoma um, Bureau of Investigation, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation is the lead investigator. So <clears throat> that's telling me they don't believe they disappeared in Kansas across the state line. And also probably the reason why they've got, um, um, hey, Christy, it's nice to see you. Bye, you babe. It's nice to see you. Good morning, guys. And it's probably why they've got the FBI involved as well, because interstate, you know, because it's crossing state lines. There's not really, it, it, it kind of gets a little hairy here because when you have interstate or multiple state it, 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 there's no real, you, you don't have a normal law enforcement body that has jurisdiction until it's determined where the crime scene is. Where the crime scene is right now, it appears to be Kansas because their car was found in Kansas. But Oklahoma State Police are the one running the investigation. So, and they were going to Eva, which is in Texas County, Oklahoma, right over the border. Um, to pick up the kids. So it, it seems to me that even law enforcement is directing us that whatever happened to them happened in Oklahoma, not Kansas. So I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a little odd for me. Hey, Mr. Quinn, how are you doing? Well, to be honest with you, this is not my first live this morning. <laughs> this is actually my second live. If you go over to Crime Stories, uh, Bullhorn Betty Crime Stories here on YouTube, you will see the first live. I did I did an hour live on TikTok before I came here and I was sitting here and I'm like, okay, well, I can go in there and set up the computer and I'm like, ah, do I really want to go through all of that right now? And it's like, no, I don't feel like going through that right now. So I'm just going to do this um, live kind of the way it is right here, format. I'm chilling out, you know, I've got a lot of stuff going on today. Um, I've got a veterans event I'm going to. I love our veterans. Um, you know, I, I really, we have an issue right now that's really kind of got me a little concerned, kind of on a side note for everybody. Um, you know, I live in Florida, so Governor DeSantis just uh, signed this, this bill. Um, and I understand why, you know, we don't want our, our counties and communities being ran, overrun by homeless people and tent cities and stuff like that. It's, it's an unpleasant appearance it's 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 not what we we want so i kind of understand why he signed this bill saying that nobody can sleep in public parks and, and stuff like that i i get it um but my problem is is they've criminalized it and uh, if you know anything about me i i'm an advocate even though i'm a conservative um i'm an advocate for uh criminal criminal um Avocation, you know, the justice system and stuff like that. And one of the things that I do is try, I try to work on programs that get to kids before they get into the system. And I also try to make sure that people, that we're as, as taxpayers aren't paying taxes to house people for stupid stuff. For example, you know, I know we don't like people stealing Snickers, okay, but this, this sounds really petty. But I'm not trying to house somebody for five years because they stole stickers three different times. You see what I'm saying? You're talking about $100,000 per head. You're talking about a candy bar that costs less than $5. So a total crime of $15 gets them $500,000 of, of jail time at the expense of the taxpayers. Sorry. I, I, it doesn't make sense. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't like it. And so criminal, criminalizing homelessness is obviously a problem that I have. I don't want anybody ever going to jail because they can't afford a place to live. That to me is not American, 
okay? It's There's a moral issue I have with that. So now we got to figure out what in the heck we're going to do with all our homeless vets, you know? And uh, this event's not to discuss the homeless, vet, homeless vets, but it, you know, when we go to these homeless, are these events like veterans events or uh, veterans things, you, you kind of, you can't help but to think about, you know, what avocation you need to do to help whatever situation you're, you're, you're looking at or hearing about. And so right now that's going to be my primary concern is making sure that our, our homeless population isn't going to jail because they're homeless. You know, it sounds so stupid, but it's, it's, this is happening all over the country. So, you know, again, if you, this is happening in your community and you don't think people should be going to jail for being broke, um, this might be a time for you to start going to your county meetings and getting involved. Just saying. So I, that's, that's it for my diatribe on that. I don't want to bore you guys with the, um, the details, but that's, it's just concerning. I don't want people going to jail, you know, especially for being poor. I mean, that's just, something's wrong with that. Um, Hey, Justin Style, it's nice to see you. Mini Mr. Mello, it's nice to see you as well. <laughs> Jake on Waves, well, okay, well, we, please don't spam the chat. We get your uh, Biden lover. Um, but if you do keep spinning the chat, we're going to have to block you. But uh, to each their own. So thank you for your advocation. We, <laughs> okay, uh, I got to say, I don't like the gas prices. And I think we're a lot more broke under uh, Biden. But uh, we're not going to get into a uh, political talk. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, to each of their own. I mean, we all have our own, you know, our own political parties. And I hope that... You know, once upon a time, we could have our own political parties and not want to cut each other's heads off, right? And then all of a sudden, 2016 happened, and it's like, you know, the Hatfields, Hatfields and McCoys, and, you know, we're ready to go to war. It's like, for what? I mean, all of our politicians kind of suck. We're all in the same freaking boat. Why the hell would we want to be um, fighting with each other? We need each other. <laughs> Trust me, we're all just a number to our government. So, don't like raw toe crust. That's great. So I'm, I can't tell if we've got some people in here. So, and I'm gonna have to sell that Donald Trump's milk. You're gonna have to stop spamming as well. So yeah, this is not the, the chat, but we do have a political channel if you guys wanna do political channel. I mean, I do have a political channel. It's um, Bullhorn Betty for President. You guys are more than welcome to go over there. And um, I'm happy to have the political conversation of uh, Biden versus Trump. I just don't want anybody crying, okay? <laughs> well, we're glad they're up early. We're glad they're up early. You know, they need to get their day started. If they can, they can get all their frustration and angst out early in the morning, maybe they'll have more of a productive day. This is not the chat to spam. No, it's not. Not really. But, you know, to each their own. Old dog. <laughs> Biden is not the one rolling. I think he's kind of checked out a little bit, but to each their own. Anyways. So Sebastian Rogers, <clears throat> holy smokes, guys, holy smokes. Um, Sebastian Rogers' glasses, or, you know, they're saying that they may not be his glasses, but what if they are? Then we're going to have a boy outside of his home, no glasses, he can't see. His dad says he can see nearsighted, so that means anything past his nose he was not going to be able to see. You know what I'm saying? Anything past his nose. Oh, and just to let you guys know, if, if anybody has a problem with one another, um, please, um, you guys are more than welcome to block each other. Yeah, I don't know if I've got mods up in this hour or not, but either way. Um, <laughs> kick out Salty. No, I'm not going to kick out Salty. Salty will chill out. Salty likes, Salty likes Bullhorn Betty. <laughs> don't get me started on Sebastian. I smell Summer Wells. I know. I, I have to try to tell you guys like... It, it, and this is the bad part about um, this is the bad part about uh, Tennessee is that it seems like if you don't have if you can't find the person the case isn't going to be closed, and I think that that is what is the most concerning about it is you know what's going to happen if we can't find him because right now we've got him leaving the house without shoes we've got um, him supposedly with a flashlight but. <clears throat> Nobody's seen a shadow in all those cameras, those door ring doorbell cameras. Mom doesn't have, even though she works for one of the best uh, security outfits out. She doesn't have a security system in the home. 
Um, you know, it just all these weird, bizarre, uh, unbelievable uh, things that are going on. Um, <laughs> you guys are funny this morning. What is the secret to happiness? To find somebody happy? I don't know. Do you know who I am? Like, I, you, you guys heard about the, the, the sweetie pie and sourpuss, right? That Olivia and I were going to write the kids book and stuff, right? I was the sourpuss of that, if you guys didn't figure that out. <laughs> What's the secret to happiness? <laughs> I don't know. When I can become happy, I'll let you know. <laughs> I Well, I don't think they always happen. We uh, Christy, we have... We have um, we have cases all over the country. I don't think it happens in Tennessee. I think there are just some states that their laws are so screwed up where they're, they're, you know, they're not up with today's technology. What do I mean by that? Once upon a time, we didn't, we only had blood typing. We didn't have the forensics that we have this day and age. And therefore, whenever they were going into these places, and, and doing this, they had to have bodies, they had to have real physical evidence because they didn't have digital evidence. Digital evidence is physical evidence in my opinion. It's just not like tangible physical evidence. And um, I just really believe that their laws are still outdated. Like we have so many things where you can use certain things to connect the dots to get convictions. And it seems to me in Tennessee, they don't know how to do that. They don't know how to present a case or they're just too chicken shit. Because some people are like, oh my God, it's too difficult. We're never, well, who, you, you're never going to get your first case won in the state of Tennessee until you attempt your first case to be won in Tennessee. When you have all these prosecutors, oh, well, we can't prosecute nobody. Nobody. They want a body. Don't tell me what a jury wants. When when people can sit there and have nobody cases all over this country and successfully prosecute them and, and get convictions, Trezell and Jacqueline West, perfect examples. Nobody was found. Their boys were never found. Never found. Never found. Yet they went to jail. So why can't Tennessee managed to put together cases like that and take it to court. Sometimes, you know, we never want anybody walking, okay? We never want anybody walking. But you know what the bad part about uh, trial and error is? Trial and error. That means there may be a mistake when you're doing a nobody um, case. There may be a mistake that's made. This idea that we're going to wait 20 freaking years so you can have a possibility of pro successfully prosecuting this case, what is the point? What is the point at that point? I just, I, I don't get it. You know, we want people in jail. I, like even Don and Candace. How, you guys tell me that those, those parents can't be successfully prosecuted on an endangerment or a ne negligent charge. Nothing, nothing, anything related to Summer Wells. Tell me that there's not enough evidence. I looked at their I looked at their laws. They have enough right now to arrest them, and they had enough to arrest them the day that Summer went missing for negligence. They chose not to. They chose not to. I'm not angry. I'm never angry. I speak I speak loud, I speak forceful. I'm I'm a very direct and a blunt person. I'm just not um, people may take that as anger, but I, I tell you what, I'm not an angry person. I don't, um, you know, every now and again, bitter, uh, yeah, maybe bitter, um, but not angry. When I'm angry, when I'm angry, when I'm truly angry, I'm very quiet. I'm like scary, quiet, like don't talk to me, stay, like I process. When I am in full on like rage, like where I feel like I could just, blow a gasket, I get very, very quiet. I get very, very quiet and want to get away from everybody because I just need to calm down. So if I, whenever I'm really, really angry, you, you'll you never know I'm really angry because I'm quiet, actually, which is kind of weird because usually when people get angry, they start screaming. I've been, I've screamed angry. Like I've been angry where I've screamed. I've raised my voice before. Um, but it's very, it's, 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 well, I shouldn't say it's very few and far between, but, um, when I get like full on, like, like, like I'm pissed, pissed, I get really quiet. 
really, really, really quiet. Yeah. We all get mad sometimes. Yeah, Betty is passionate. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm passionate. Well, and that's that's the other thing is I just don't like the BS. I hate I hate word salad and I hate BS. It's like you know, just give it to like I I I think that's what it is. Like I appreciate people being blunt with me and just you know like I I don't like sugarcoating. I even with talking to me like I'm just like just say it's boom 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 boom. I don't like sh I don't like sugarcoating. I don't like you dancing around. Like even when my mom my mom will start telling me something and she's like, well you know, well this I'm like mom spit it out. What are you trying to say? <laughs> Like, just say it. Like, put trying to dance around it. Put trying to make it better. What is it? Like, just tell me. What is it? You know, so I'm just, a, I like bluntness. I like, uh, I, I, I treat people as I want to be treated, to be honest with you. I'm a very blunt person, so I expect to be treated bluntly. I don't want people to be aggressive, you know, but I want them to be assertive. And people mistaken assertiveness for aggressiveness, which is um, a little crazy. Calm down, Betty. Nighthawk. Good Lord. Calm down. Calm, how, how much more calm can I be? <laughs> Tell me the truth, even if my feelings, yeah, get hurt. I know. I'm one of those girls who ask me if your your ass looks big in the jeans, and if your ass looks big in the jeans, I'm going to tell you, change your jeans. <laughs> get to the point. Exactly. Exactly. So <clears throat> with... Sebastian, can somebody tell me, and I don't know if this is true or not, I know that Seth went on somebody's, because I, I heard this, because we have the, the page and I'm monitoring the page, um, that Seth or Seth's group is the one that um, found the glasses. Can somebody confirm that? Jason, or whatever, I, you just, I see you just, uh, yeah, Jake, Jake, stop. Like, I don't want to, I, you're an adult. Act like it, please. I don't want to have to block you. You don't, you don't deserve to be blocked by saying Biden 2024, okay? So let's just knock it off. I don't want to have to block you. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not a teacher, nor do I uh, aspire to be a teacher. We already got a one crazy teacher on this platform. I think that's enough for, for everybody. So... <laughs> okay, so thank you, Smiley. So he found, he fa his group was the one that found it. Now, can you tell me, did they find the glasses near the school? Because that is what I'm, I'm learning is um, that they had, that there's possibly, the glasses could be a red hair. I know that. That's why I'm trying to find out, um, Justice Jane. That's, that's where I'm getting at with all this is that, yeah, uh, the glasses could be a red herring. But I want to know the location. They shouldn't have picked them up and brought them to Seth. They should have. That's the bad thing. That's why I don't like whenever. And this is just, and this is for anybody. Whenever you're out there, I always have, and we have boxes of um, gloves. I got vinyl gloves here because they were cheaper. I bought gloves when, when we had, like when it was $14 for a box of gloves. I'm not paying $14 for a box of nitro gloves. So I ended up getting vinyl gloves. They were like six or seven bucks. I don't really necessarily like them, but for us being out there, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're barriers. I don't like the fact that people pick up stuff. That's one of the things, and I know it happens because when we were out there, it just, it just happens. Um, and, and law enforcement can exclude it. So don't, don't get all bent out of shape and oh my God, they're, they're messing with, they, they can exclude it. What they do is they take your, they take your, um, your DNA, they take your fingerprints and they exclude you. That's how they do it. I know that because when we when I was doing that um, job in Pasco, when we found that night that like butcher knife thing that we thought because he was a, a, a chef, we thought it could be associated with it, but it was something shiny, and I just I didn't know what it was. And so when we were searching, it just caught my eye, and you naturally grab it and pick it up. So that's why I always say, you know, you should try to wear gloves when you're out there. So when something like that happens, you'll still have it. But it, again, they can exclude you. They, I know people are like, you know, evidence and blah, 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 blah. It, yes, it's not the best situation. They would like to see where it's at in its format. And actually, one of the reasons why I film, too, because uh, the law enforcement was able to allow me, you know, they, they had me send the film over to them. So they were able to go there. Okay, that, that, then we're going to go ahead and, um, how do I, 
Why can't I remove? Time out. There we go. We'll time you out for 24 hours. There you go. You can come back tomorrow, Jake. When I have more controls over. So there we go. Yeah, you can come back tomorrow. Um, something is amiss. Have they been on camera going to by the gas station? I don't know. And, and I'd like, I mean, I'm sure law enforcement knows. But I want to know, maybe Smiley can tell me, and uh, it, where were the glasses found? That, that's where I need to know. Was it close? Was it close? You know, was it close to the school? Because that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that the glass, I don't know if they were found at the school or around the school, but I've heard, I heard that they were going to be going around the school. Um, okay, user. Okay, there we go. So I'm just trying to find out what is going on with that. Is guidance in here? A beautiful guidance? I didn't. I don't think I said hi to everybody this morning because I'm on this phone and it's harder to read. So we do have some trolls in here this morning. It's, you know, good morning to you trolls. I wish you guys would find some better things to inspire yourself and be, be happier. That's what I'd really like. The glasses were found at 210 Hutch Road close to the Garrett grandparents. 210 Hutch Road. Give me a second. Is that in Gibsontonville? Hold on, let me see how far away this is from their home map. Okay, we want directions and we're going to put 1008 Stafford. Okay, so I've got to have this wrong. You said, where was it? Uh, Hutch Road. I put Hutchinson. Hold on. Hutch Road. Give me just a second. It's not giving me Hutch Road. It's not giving me, are you sure that's the right road? Because it doesn't say Hutch Road. It doesn't say tenant. Let me see. Um, 210. Let me just see. 210 Hutch. Hutch Court? Maybe? 22 minutes. So it looks like it's 22 minutes, is that right? It looks like it's 22 minutes away. Um, driving, is that is that right? Was it in Gallatin? Gallatin, Tennessee, yeah, okay, yeah, still opening my eyes. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, I started early this morning. Hey, Sergeant King, it's nice to see you, love. Um, exactly. Vinny Politan said something's amiss with this. Oh, of course. I, I think everybody looking in, and I like how he said, he's like, I don't convict. <laughs> I'm like, we do. The full whore Betty convicts. No. <laughs> it's what makes everybody so angry. So, um, 22 minutes. Hold on a second. Let me add something else here. Add a stop. Oops. Nope. 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 Add a stop. What was the name of his school? What was the name of his school? Can't wait to see in Illinois. Great. I hope that's not a threat because you know we're going there for a um, for a protective order. I think it would be actually. Let me go ahead and take a picture of that. Okay. Well, we'll see you there. Happy to. Uh. Oh, good God. Guys, um, go ahead and um, unhide this user. Okay, that user is hidden. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and time them out for 24 hours. We can time out for 24 hours, guys, just to let you know. Beach. Smiley's World. Beach. What does beach mean? I heard the beach, the beach area, but I'm trying to still trying to figure out what, 
Do we have the name of his, what was it, Hunter's, is it Hunter's Middle School or something like that? Sorry, I'm trying to put it into the map to see which direction it was. Actually, I heard his school was only a like a half a mile beach school. Okay, let me put beach school in there. I thought it was something else for whatever reason. Okay, thank you guys. Beach, be, it was he, he was in high school. Oh, that's why I got. Okay, that's Madeline's school. Okay. Okay, so we got Hutch. Now let's go ahead and put Beach, Beach, High School. So where's, oh my God. Now I know why they were searching on Shackle Island. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Is it? What is this one right here? It was literally right down the road. It is right by Beach High School. Is it? No, it's not. Are you guys sure the glasses were found 22 minutes away? I thought they were found by the school. Because I'm trying to find out, the reason why I'm looking for this, is I'm trying to find out where their house is in conjunction with where they found, um, where they found the glasses. This is why I hate working on this so much. I know, I know. Well, you know what? It's crazy for me because I do this stuff all day long, all day, every day, right? And I'm constantly here and I miss so much crap. It's not even funny. Sessa, Gallatin, Tennessee, 22 minutes away. So it is 22 minutes away. All right, well, let me put another, because I see them and the school, the school is literally right next to um, their house. And the glasses were so far away. Let me put, um, what was what was the um, Clarksville? Let me put Clarksville in here in Memphis and see which direction it goes. Clarksville, Tennessee. So Clarksville, Tennessee is in the opposite direction. Let's um, let's add Memphis. Oh good heavens, heavens to Betsy. Memphis. Okay. So that's D. D is way over there. There's the school. A is where the I don't know. This is not going in any... This is going in opposite direction of everything, guys. So, I'm plugging all this stuff in. You see that big red dot right over there? That big red dot is um, where they found the glasses, okay? That's just... I wish I could... Just, you guys can't even see it. It's all blurry. I don't know. And then you've got um, the school, or where they got the glasses. So, you have um, this... And then you have the high school which is 20 minutes away from where they found the glasses, which just, and it's all going in the opposite direction from anything. Everything's in the opposite direction of Clarksville and Memphis. Uh, yeah, Melissa, I, I see that it's the, and I looked at it, but I'm trying to like f figure out why he would be going there and how the heck would he get there? I mean, think about it. You know what? Let me see. Do I have this? Hold on just a second. Let me go over here. Give me just a second, guys. Can you guys see me? Perfect. I didn't realize I didn't change it to subscriber mode and anybody and everybody could just talk and I thought that they could be adults. I should have knew better. Um, 
How long would it take to walk it? Um, like four hours. Um, let me take all this stuff out. Hold on. Let me just see what it would be for walking. Are you talking about just to the glasses, wherever the, the thing is to the glasses? Um, let's see here. Let me back up just a tad. It says walking. Oh, that's two. Hold on. Let me take the school out of here. And done. So walking would be five hours, according to this, to where the glasses were. So it's a five-hour walk. But it's a five-hour walk in the wrong direction. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got his house here, and then his father's over here and up, and then where his stepdad went is almost straight across from their house. It's like straight across. So, but where the glasses were, it's in the opposite direction. Um, I'm interested to find out if they're his. And if they are his, how in the world did they get there? That doesn't even make, it doesn't even remotely make sense. Yeah, I'm still planning on going to Tennessee. Yeah, I already talked to my mom this morning. My mom couldn't sleep either. We had a lot of people that couldn't sleep last night. And uh, so I was talking to her like about a quarter to five this morning. And I told her, I said, I may just have to borrow the car. It depends on if I get my car back. I'm hoping that I can get it back today or tomorrow. But I'm not holding my breath. Like, I'm really kind of upset. I'm really butthurt over this whole car thing. Like, I, I, I the worst case scenario. I was told the worst case scenario was two weeks. You know, Friday, it's been a month. Friday, I have been without a car for a month. So I'm not really, really the happiest camper. I know things that go on, you know, you, things are just out of our control. They're out of our control, you know, no matter how upsetting as they are. And this is just one of those things where it's, it's a part issue. And it's, but I am, I've already talked to my mom. She's told me that I can use the car. So I'll, if, if all else fails, um, Thursday, if I don't have my car back, I'm just going to go pick up my mom or have my mom pick me up and um, I'm going to get on the road. Do you think all the family in on it like Nina? Yeah, I do. I, I, I don't trust, I do not trust Chris Proudfoot's family. I do not trust the Bower Sox. I do not trust the Proudfoots. I don't trust any of them. Um, and it's, it, you know, there's a lot of behaviors that are equated to that. You know, would I, f even with all the information as it is right now, would I feel the way I feel right now if I actually saw uh, Chris and Katie literally turning over every stone to find their son? I probably would keep my suspicions to myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, but because they're being so damn blatant about it, 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 it's almost sickening. Like, how dare you tell me that you're a Navy and you can't even go out there and search for your missing son, but you can take an hour to go visit with family at Cracker Barrel and you can take hours to go to a, a, a barbecue uh, place to eat. I, I just wondering, Katie and Chris, is this, this your idea? I mean, is this what you guys have been wanting? Just to be by yourselves? No kids? No nothing? Was this your idea? Was he, was he too much of a problem for you? Was he causing problems in your marriage? Katie, did you sell your son's soul out? Did you choose a man over your own kid? I mean, I'm curious. I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Because I'm I'm telling you. Um, something ain't adding up. Something ain't right. Their story doesn't make sense. And now, now she wants to believe somebody stole her kid? Uh, how? How? Who had the code of the front door? Why would anybody want to take Sebastian? He is not a controllable person. He is one that, when he's in an environment, would buck because he doesn't understand it because he's got autism. So who is going to want to deal with his outbursts by being a in a stranger danger situation? And not only that, but if he was put in a stranger danger situation, I'd have to think that it would be pretty obvious because he would be very uncomfortable and probably making a huge ass scene. They did move? They moved out of their house? Chris asked Seth to take Sebastian so they could take care of them. Yeah, I know. He wanted, they were having marital problems. So it's kicked the kid out. It just shows you the kind of person Chris Proudfoot is. 
He's been married five times, but he literally thinks it's the child that's causing his marital problems. Is he a fucking idiot? Excuse my language. Chris, trust me, babe. It ain't everybody else. It's not all the women in your life. You know what it is? Your problem is you. And no matter where you go, you'll never be able to run away from yourself. Five marriages. Absolutely. But hey, it's it's Sebastian's fault why his marriage is falling apart. Couldn't possibly be him. I mean, he's just the stellar guy that he's so awesome that even law enforcement thinks his his timeline related to this is so top secret. Can't let the can't let the public know. It might alter the I bet it would alter the uh the, the direction of this case. Quite so. <laughs> I bet you it would. Kate, I think Chris was wondering eyes. Yeah, he, of course he has wondering eyes. A guy, five freaking wives. Trust me, that's, he's he's got temperament issues. He's got bedroom issues. He's got a whole host of issues. Betty always says what I'm thinking. <laughs> I always say what's on my mind. Like I say, I got a pop mouth. If it goes through the brain, it comes out the mouth. That's why I always caution everybody. Some of the things you hear on here just are my opinions. Actually, the majority of everything you hear on here are just my opinions. Just my opinions. <clears throat> so out of this whole entire situation, just out of curiosity, do how does my audience feel right now? Are we still in the realm of we feel there's something fishy with mom and stepdad? I, I'm just bouncing back and forth because I keep wondering if Katie has it in her to do something. Because she keeps, she's adamant that she's there by herself. And I'm thinking nobody would be stupid enough to tell law enforcement that they're in Memphis when they're at their house. Like, you, you they have road cameras. They have uh, license plate readers. Like, the cameras, you don't even know they're there. You don't even realize they're there and they're picking up everything. I do, too. I have to be honest with you. I really do. I think... Um, I think it's the stepdad, but see, this is my problem. I, like, I see Chris as being one of those, those kind of men that would, would not, they don't want any witnesses. He's military trained. He knows how important it is not to have witnesses. And he was on the phone with Katie for three hours that night. Could that have been intentional? Could he have done that so he knew exactly when she was going to be going to bed? Could he have done that so he knew, because he's been with his wife for many years, he knows her sleeping patterns. Could he have gotten off the phone with her and been waiting for the two hour mark to hit so he could sneak in the house and take Sebastian out undetected by his mom? Could he be that kind of monster where he's sitting right next to his wife, holding her hand and, and letting her cry on his shoulder. Meanwhile, he has this secret that he snuck in the house and took her kid out. Oh, Mike is saying Mike is saying that he believes it's Katie, not Chris. Wow, interesting. I, I'm back and forth with it because she's been adamant that she's been the only person there. But because she's been so adamant that she's the only person there, it makes me feel like Chris was there. And Chris was the only one with scratches. Katie has no markings on her. They're both back in Mississippi. What a piece, of, what, what garbage, what garbage leaving their son again, again. You know what, Katie? Mm. You know, I really try, I try really hard. I wake up each and every day and I say, you know, how can we make this world a little bit better, right? What can we do to make this world a little bit better? We go to our meetings. I deal with a shit ton of garbage on these platforms just to advocate for these cases, you know? And what really, really, really gets me out of all of this that just makes me want to work 10 times harder and, and 100 times better is the fact when I hear mothers running away from their disabled children that are missing. Katie, if I haven't told you this yet, like you are on the top of my biggest piece of shit mother's award list. Like you are there in first position, babe. Like first position, like you're kind of garbage, you're kind of trash. I got some, I, I have some choice. I, you know what, I hope to God I do not, 
I hope to God if I see the, that Chris and Katie, I pray to God they're searching. I pray to God they're out there searching. I'll leave them alone, won't say shit to them. But if I find out they're freaking in Mississippi while we have hundreds of people out there in the woods searching for their son, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I may have to call Mississippi law enforcement to let them know I'm coming into town. I don't know. I don't know. I think it would probably be wise and best for Katie to go home. But you know what? Chris won't allow her to because then she'll be alone. She'll be away from his abuse. He's controlling her. I don't know. I don't like Chris. I don't like Chris. I'd like Chris to come and, and talk to me and treat me the way he treated Nina. And, and, and Chris, I'm just a little five foot nothing girl nothing but I'd love you to Trump come and talk to me or treat me the way you treat her love it I think they have financial problems I think they're pieces of shit and you know what and it just it just this just emboldens our position you ran away from home you left your son behind and you're selling his house you don't you know you never thought he was coming home did you you knew he wasn't coming back these assholes knew he wasn't coming back. I hope they fucking rot in hell. Excuse my language, but I do. I hope Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot rot in a cold, cold hell. That's what I hope. Because you're not gonna convince me this is a mother that loves her kid. Katie, you are the biggest disgusting piece of, you know what we need to do? We need to be um, advocating to have their, whatever they're getting military wise, pulled. I want them not to have any of their military benefits. I, I want it all stripped from them. Like, I literally want it all stripped from them. They do not deserve it. They do not deserve it at all. They, 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 they should not be receiving one freaking benefit courtesy of our taxpayer money. Not one. I bet they were. So they were down the road from Chris's mom and stepdad's house. Seems awfully freaking convenient. What did they, they accidentally drop them when they were taking the, taking the garbage out? Did anybody check the, the grandmother's landfill? You don't look for something, you know where it is. Exactly, exactly. What a freaking piece of shit. Well, you know what, Katie, at this point, don't even bother coming and looking for your son. We got it. You, you just stay where you're at. And you better hope to God you don't fucking see me. Because I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you all about yourself. And I will make sure it's public. I will make sure you know exactly where I'm coming from. I would hope that you get off your ass, take your ass back home, and start looking for your son. But if you don't want to and you need to be called out and need to be embarrassed, I'm the person that, that, can, be, that can do that for you. And there is not a damn thing anybody's going to be able to do to me. The worst thing that's going to happen to me is somebody throws me in jail. Oh, well. Cakewalk. Cakewalk. Like I said, Chris, I'd like to see you too. Talk to me like Nina. Yeah, we're gonna be out there too, Leslie. I'm gonna be getting out there. I just, I, I'm angry with Chris and Katie. I'm angry with them. And the reason why they ran away is because their whole community knows. That's what it is. Their whole community knows. Everybody's looking at them awfully. Everybody is is monitoring their movements. Their, their, their neighbors are monitoring their movements. The people in the community are monitoring their movements. They don't want anybody monitoring their movements. Why? Because they're guilty as hell. I'll, I'll help you get out. Yeah. The, that family is terrible. And you know what? Katie, if you're listening... We're happy to get you away from Chris. Chris won't fuck with me. I'll tell you that. If you want to get away from him, we'll give you all the support you need to get away from that man. We'll give you all the support. We'll give you counseling support. We'll give you housing support. We'll give you whatever you need to get. I have a funny feeling you can take care of yourself. But I think you need to get away from Chris. Unless you want to go down in the sinking boat he created. I'd suggest you cut ties. See, I, I learned a long time ago when to hold them and when to fold them. And if I was sitting in your position, I'd be out there looking for my son son, and, and know it's time to fold. Chris is no good. Chris is a piece of shit. He's no good. And you are 
probably right there with him. If they get convicted after 60 day benefits stop. Yeah, but they shouldn't be getting any benefits now. I don't want them taking, um, selling this house, getting a several hundred thousand dollars and turning around and going getting another VA, VA loan. I don't want them doing that. They don't deserve a VA loan. They don't deserve any benefits from the VA. Their child is missing and they're hiding away like cowards. And they're military. I bet you they didn't even fight for us. She was probably here over here. I, I, I'd like to know where you went, Katie. Katie and Chris, where did you serve? How many years did you serve? I want to know. My uncle served 30 years. I don't know, Mike. I don't know if it was... Um, I'll, but they do, Sergeant. I know that because I went and pulled their mortgage stuff. They had 100% financing. There's, there's only very few 100% financing out there. And one's HUD and the other's VA. And if I pull their mortgage, I guarantee it's going to say VA on it. So they're, they're getting the benefits. They're getting the benefits. People went out to Mississippi and there ain't no flyer. No, no, there's no flyers. They lied to the whole world. Christopher and Katie Proudfoot need to be under an investigation. As a matter of fact, they need to be in jail until this stuff is sorted out. I'm sorry. They're missing a child. They can't tell you where the child is. Their story doesn't make sense and they're running away from home. We have her, you can detain them for 48 hours. Why have they not done any forensic? Why would they let them go? I don't care. I don't care. I, I don't like Tennessee law enforcement. So if it's not an easy case, it doesn't get solved. Administrative desk. Chris was administrative desk. I knew it. I knew it. He's a pussy. Even if they find for Sebastian, it's going to be hard to prove who. Oh, no, I don't think it would be uh, Foghorn. I really don't. If they find Sebastian, I think at that point, the people are going to be arrested. They are so worried about Seth and his GoFundMe, but he's looking for his son and gave up his job. Yeah. She's not, was an electrician. She is an electrician. I bet you I got more electrical work than she does, electrical experience than she does. I've been riding on a truck since I was two years old. I knew how to say channel lock before I said daddy. <laughs> I'm just joking. I feel bad for Seth, but you know what, guys? Listen, we're going to be out there in Tennessee come, come hell or high water. My mom told me I could borrow the car if I don't get my car back in time. I'm going to be leaving. Hopefully, I'll leave here early um, or late Thursday. I'll get there midday on Friday. And I'll stay there and be ready for Saturday. I'll go poke around and, and you know, my little places that I got on my map that I wanted to check out anyways. Um, but that's kind of where I'm going to be right now. And then, I'll, of course, I'll be back by Sunday or Monday back home front. Because I'm only literally going up there for a day and coming, turning around and coming back. And I'm, that's like a 13-hour drive for me. So I figured if I can do 13 hours for this boy, if you guys are closer, maybe you guys would be willing to drive as well. But it's 126 River Road in um, um, Hendersonville, Tennessee. 126 River Road. That's where we're going to be meeting uh, to start uh, search efforts. I, I'll, I'll, I'll get with them and find out where they've already searched so we can ident identify other areas. Brink Help Legal Assistant. Does she even work for them? Yeah, it's at Rudder's. Thank you, Green Eye. I can believe that during this investigation that Ellie is okay with them leaving regardless of what they can prove. Um, they have said they can not rule out foul play. This is insane. Yeah, and they have no court order. They can't force them to stay there. Without a court order, detainment, or arrest, they can't force anybody to stay anywhere. Even if you're under full-fledged investigation, because my mom was saying the same thing, and I'm like, you know, I don't, you know, it doesn't really matter. You, you, the law is the law. You have to have a court order, you know, or you have to be arrested or detained, you know, under the control of the, um, the courts or police. I think S is at the box sock. B sock. What does that mean? At the B sock. What's the B sock, Laura? Because I don't know. 
But if his glasses are near his mom and dad, then maybe we need to start focusing where his mom and dad are. Because that's the, if they, if those glasses are his, that's the lead that we got. And my question is, is why would Sebastian be running toward the grandparents, not his father? Again, doesn't make sense. Who said they drove to Alaska? Um... I can't remember who said, um, but I did hear that as well, that they, they took a trip to Alaska. And I remember everybody was going crazy saying it reminded them of Gabby Petito, Brian Laundrie's parents when they went to Fort DeSoto. But in reality, it's okay. They just uh, look more guilty. Um, it, they do, they do, they do look more guilty, but still, I don't want parents being guilty of this. I'd like, you know, to be honest with you, if something like this happens, I'd like to know it's, it's somebody unrelated. You know, it, it sounds a little sick in the head, but I mean, perception matters. You know, uh, a kid being unalive by a parent is so much so much more egregious to me than a stranger. It's disgusting to me. Seth said the glasses were far away from his home. Yeah, talk about where they found the glasses. I don't believe this is his glasses. I think somebody... Um, well, it might not even be a setup. It might just be somebody else's glasses, you know. I mean, kids lose glasses all the time. I can't tell you how many of these readers I've got around here. And I know that this right here came from a, a six-pack, and I've only got two left. I don't know where the other four glasses <laughs> They might be my glasses. I mean, I don't know. I was in Tennessee not too long ago, you know. So they might just be, it might just be totally unrelated altogether. But if it's not... And thereby, you know, that was, if those are his glasses and they were near Chris's, Chris's parents' house, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be searching. My, my focus will be in that area, period. Um, I'm interested to learn about those glasses, but Seth seems to think that they, they look similar enough to Sebastian's glasses that they were worth turning over to law enforcement. So if that doesn't tell, tell you anything. And if it's one of our searchers, you know, what I mean by one of our searchers, it means like a normal Joe, um, not that they're coming from my search. Of course not. One of our searchers means somebody out there because social media brought them out there. Um, it sounds like one of them is the one that found it. You know, this is what I talk about. Everybody, everybody sits there and criticizes until they, they, they start understanding why we do the things that we do. You will never find anything sitting at home. Okay, being on, on this side, being where I am right now is never going to help anything. It's never going to help a person. It's not going to solve a case. It's not going to help bring in leads. It's not going to do anything for me. Okay, um, being out there and in the woods, you're never going to find something unless you're physically looking for it. It's just, it, it's never going to happen. And sometimes you find stuff when you're not looking for it. When you're just out there searching, you stumble across stuff all the time. You, you'd be amazed. And a lot of people are even, you know, even when I'm out there advocating for a case, physically there with my camera and everything, not searching, uh, but advocating for, you will never believe how many people will just literally walk up to you and start telling you information that you've never heard before, and they can corroborate it literally right there on the spot. It is, it's a, a, just a different way of getting information. It's an, e for me, it's easier. Like I can sit out in front of, in front of a road and people know where I am and literally get uh, the whole life story of the victim and the family in 15 or 20 minutes versus sitting here at home and it taking me literally 8 to 16 hours to acquire the same amount of information. You know? We're just looking for anything. I really don't think. They're Sebastians. I, I I agree. I don't I don't know whether they are or not. I because I'm not there. But if they are, man, that really does change the direction of this case, doesn't it? It really would change the direction of this case. They were found in Gallatin. Yeah. Yeah, they gave the address. I looked at the map to see it, but you know, the the one thing that I notice about that, the one thing that I notice about that is the fact that um I just lost my thought. Oh, Gallatin is that it was in the wrong direction. That's it. Is that it's not toward Memphis. It's not toward uh, Clarksville. It's not toward any place that, that Sebastian would have gone to. I don't think he liked his grandparents, just like I don't think he liked Chris. I think, I think 
Katie should have been a real mom and left Chris when she realized Chris didn't like her son instead of trying to, to sell her son back to his dad so they can go and have their shitty lifestyle where they're going to get a divorce anyways. You want to know how I know the ending of this one? Because the man's been married five times. He doesn't know how to stay committed. He doesn't have integrity. He's a piece of garbage. You know how I know he's a piece of garbage? Because he's been married five times. Now, granted, if he was married five times in his 20s, I can understand that people change over time, right? Over time, you you learn. So for the people like my 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 stepmom, uh, not my stepmom, my um, mother-in-law, okay, for example, Vince's mom, married, I think she was married six times. So, but in all fairness, three of her husbands died. I mean... <laughs> And she's not a black widow. They died of health, you know, natural health is, I think, well, one of them died um, from the kidney failure that was clawed. Remember I told you about that? He had an aneurysm. And so doctors had put him on all this medicine to thin his blood. So his aneurysm in his brain didn't, but all the medication that they, they were making him, that to sustain him on, killed his liver and his kidneys. So he never died from the um, aneurysm in his brain. He died from kidney and liver failure. Um, so, I mean, and they're, they're, one of them had a heart attack. And I think the other one, she was married two or three different times to him. So one guy got three, three marriages out of it. So, you know, I mean, so there are people out there that have a multiple, multiple, really, but there's no violence. You don't have this story of um, being, you know, where, where children and, and, and women are being brutalized in a house. Um, that's the, the story we're getting from Chris and, and it coupled with him being married five times. Trust me, he's not going to have a good relationship. He's not going to be able to stay married. I don't know. Some, some people just need to be alone, you know? I think CP constantly had problems with Sebastian and caused KP to stop caring about her son. I don't know. I think she's a piece of shit. I think Katie Proudfoot is a, a real piece of shit mother. And, I, and you know what, if she's, she knows about this, I don't care if she had any part in it or not. If she knows anything about it, I can't wait to hear those. I, I can't wait for her to hear that cage slam behind her. I wish them uh, pieces of crap would tell. Yeah, this idea that, that we, we believe they're crap at this point. No, we don't. You ran away from home not once but twice. Lady, just stay gone. You're a waste of space. And so is that piece of shit husband. And I'm gonna tell you like I told uh, Lilani Simon and her mother, look around at everything you got because it's about to be gone. You can sell your house, think you're collecting this money or that money. I have a funny feeling they're selling their house because they know Chris Proudfoot's gonna have to get an attorney. They need some liquid cash. Katie likes Sebastian SSDI check. That's what it's sounding like. She seemed like she was a caring. Mothers don't have, you know, sons and care for them and have clean houses and six hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes, um, just to unalive their sons. So something has happened over the years. But you know what? We have to look at Ruby Frankie, right? Ruby Frankie is another one. Lived in a huge house and abused her children. I don't know if any of this will ever stop. I really don't. All right, guys. Well, I love you. That was kind of my commentary for today. So we're, uh, well, not for the day. I'll be back. Um, you know, we'll do a more uh, formal live later today. But I didn't want you guys thinking. I feel like I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm trying to do so much. Plus, I have the court hearing coming up, and it's just been I, my time's been really, really, really short. And I, I don't want you guys feeling like I'm abandoning you because I'm not abandoning you. I love you guys, and I want you guys to know that you guys are my babies, and uh, so I decided just to do an impromptu live, something just right from here. I'd rather do, I'd rather, I'd rather come from here than not do one at all, you know, and I'm sorry for uh, all the trolls that were in here. I really do hope that people grow up um, on the streets of YouTube. Like, we don't have these problems on TikTok. We don't have these problems on Instagram. We don't have these problems on Twitter. The only time we have these problems is here on YouTube, and you know, we all have to be here. We might as well get along. And not only that, but if nobody's doing that to you, why are you doing it to other people? It just seems pretty shitty. It just seems pretty shitty. And if you're having a really crappy day and you're doing this and your life is miserable, you're probably making your own life miserable. You know, I mean, 
there's people in my chat that wake up every day very, very, very happy. And everybody can wake up every day very, very, very happy. So don't forget to be fearless. If you see something, say something. Now it's a prevention's worth a pound of cure. And until next time, <laughs> please be safe and kind to one another. Pretty simple stuff. But we still have jackasses out there. So don't be a jackass and don't be a Richard. God bless.